Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Govinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at Bit Juggler by Tone Boosters. Now, I did a video on their Real Bus app before. Fantastic app. In some ways, you could say that Bit Juggler is almost, almost a kind of digital equivalent of Real Bus. A Real Bus is tape simulation, so you want to go and get that vintage tape effect, then Real Bus is a great choice. A bit juggler is if you want to go for a vintage digital effect, lo-fi digital, um, and you can use it subtly or you can just annihilate your sound completely with this. Um, just to mention the first thing, I've got several free copies of the app to give away to subscribers to the channel. So look at the pinned comment at the top of the YouTube comment section for details of how to win. And the winners will be announced two days from now. And if you win, I will tell you by replying to your comment in the YouTube section below. All right, good luck, everybody. Now, um, let me just let you hear this on something first. I'll let you hear it on a few different things, and then I'll go and give you a full walkthrough of the app. So I'm actually first going to let you hear it on something more ambient, because I don't want people to think that is only good for doing chip tune or whatever. Let me bring the amount down first here. Okay. So this is our this is a piano loop that I made earlier. So We can just bring in a little tiny bit of this. And if you see here, by the way, uh, what we're doing here is bringing down the sample rate. Bit rate is 16 bits, that hasn't been brought down. Sample rate's down to 1585 hertz here. Okay, let me put the amount up. So if I bring the sample rate down even more, we're going to really get into something quite unrecognizable. This is a very cool sound design tool. If you just enjoy experimenting with sound, I think these, these kind of apps are brilliant. I love them. And you know with Tone Boosters, everything is just going to be done on a sound level as well as it can possibly be. They've got a great reputation, fantastic developer. Um, so let's just let you hear a bit right now. The thing is, there are different algorithms that we can use for all of these. So I'll go into these and let you hear these in more detail later in the video. And now I'm just giving you a little rough idea. What's cool is that we've got an envelope follower here that we can apply if we want. Uh, we've also got an LFO, so let me get something that'll let you hear that. Well, we let's do that now. So here the sample rate is being modulated by a triangle LFO. That I've got selected over here. But we could change the LFO type. Again, I'll look at that in more detail later. I love these interesting noise effects, great for ambient stuff. Okay, let me pop out and I'll open up another 
AUM session uh, or two. I'll let you hear this on a few different things, and then I'll come back into this one and do my walkthrough in more detail. I'll see you in a second. Take a look at the interface. So we'll start from the right. I'm not going to go through these things here about the, all, the, all the things that are shared in all the Tone Boosters apps. I went into those in my real bus video, I think. Uh, you can also check the manual. There's a good manual. And you'll find those things in here. They're not very interesting for me to go into in this video. Like things like how we can change the color scheme, for example, right? You can read about that stuff yourself. Okay, so over here on the right, we have a gain knob, which can be very useful because sometimes, especially when you bring down the quantization depth a lot, you can get a quite large spikes in volume. Now, let's take a look at this resampling section first. So you can see here that we're not activating any quantization reduction yet. So let's look at resampling. So what I'm going to pay attention to here is how using this analog to digital knob and digital to analog knob can change the quality of the aliasing, this, this lovely sound that we can hear there, this very digital sound. And uh, notice how this can add some resonance if we get it on the right sound sources and so on. Let's listen to this. hear that resonance. You can get some beautiful timbres from this thing. Especially when you get the resonances right. got four different algorithms. I love this interleave one. And we have sample and hold. That's also pretty cool. Again, when you play with the rate, you're going to want to listen because you're going to see different harmonics coming out. So you're going to want to leave it somewhere that's going to sound right for the effect you're going for. If you want something more harmonic, you're going to need to think about that and get it. But of course, also very cool to play with this with the LFO. You 
You hear this is a lot smoother. See the difference in the resonance there? It's much flatter, right? Listen to that aliasing. This is the secret with this thing, just getting these beautiful harmonics that you can get sometimes. Okay, let's look at quantization. So bit rate. So here the envelope is very important, see? So here there's no envelope. You can see it's just going totally crazy. Now we can change the attack and release time. I'll bring this gain down, I'll bring this up. So you hear the slow attack there. And that's a fast attack. Fast attack and fast release. Slow release. Now we have different different types of reduction here. Uh, for example, some of these things are things that are used in telephony. This one is, I love this one. This is basically like um, really, you can get down to real low quality sound that a very, very low quality MPE would have had. Sorry, MP3. <laughs> this very beautiful musical noise. So again, you know, you want to think about the amount knob. With a lot of these things, it's nice to just add a little touch of this stuff. We can put in noise into the silences. And we have an attack for that here. So you see here, you can hear the first part of the piano note sounds a bit more normal. But here, right from the, the, the piano strikes, it sounds it's reduced quality. Now with this dithering, you're getting into real crazy digital noise territory. And we can play with the shape of that. You hear here it's much less differentiated. See, with these things, you've got this kind of quality like you're listening on a, on a telephone line while you're waiting for a call.
now. Again, you can see some of these have envelopes, some don't, right? So what you get here changes depending on what you select over here. Now in the pre processings let me let me change this preset. Okay, I like this. So here we can add a drive. So this overdrive, and if we click this, then we're getting distortion. So this turns on hard clipping. We have a high pass filter. The developer is currently adding a low pass filter and resonance knobs as well for the filter. So I'm sure that will update will come out soon. So this is very useful if you're getting something too boomy and you want to take out some of the bass. Here we play with stereo widths. This emphasis thing is not very well explained in the manual. But this can also be used on presets where there's a lot of aliasing, but for example here. This can take out some of that aliasing. At least that's what it seems like it's doing to me. You see? We have less of that high end. By the way, I just love how this looks. I'll take you through a few presets. there. I love this one. This is very cool. So let's take a look at the LFO. So we have different LFO types. So when it's disabled, the LFO is not on. And here it's sign. Now here we set the time for the LFO in beats. So there's eight beats. And here it's one beat. And we can go up to 16 beats. We can change the phase of the LFO here. You can see that happen in here. So you can make small adjustments to where the LFO is at any time. Now here, this is bipolar. LFO depth, so this one is for this knob and this one, the rate, right, this for the sample rate, bit depth sample rate. So so you, so you need to pay attention, if both of these knobs are in the middle, the LFO is not going to do anything, this is a zero value. And these are our negative values. Watch what that's doing there. These are the positive values. See the difference? So let's just go through a few of the LFO types. this will go up and then suddenly jump back down. Here we just get sudden jump, it stays, then it jumps back, it stays, jumps back, stays. 
triangles, so it is just regular up and down. It takes the same time to go up as it takes to go down. Here we have different types of pulse waves with a different duty cycle. So how much is it in the positive, how much is it in the negative. And then these step ones are cool. So it jumps, then it jumps again, jumps again. This is going to do four steps. This is going to do eight steps. Sixteen. And now we're getting into random LFOs. This is how many times it will randomly jump in the space of this period. This will make eight random jumps in this time period. Here it will make four random jumps in that time period. You see, it's much faster. This pump one's pretty cool. go to this one here. Make it a bit slower. Okay, so you get the, get the idea there, everyone. Very cool effect. Uh, I think it can sound, it can sound really good on various uh, rich synth sounds like square waves, for example. Um, it sounds good on the brass sounds and that kind of thing. Um, it can sound good on pads if they're quite rich in spectrum um basically you can tr try it on a bunch of different stuff i as i say i really like using this on something like that beautiful piano another thing i'll mention is you could hear i put the a lot of reverb on the piano before putting it into bit juggler putting in reverb before putting things into this can make things a lot more interesting sounding all right everyone thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video um, don't forget to give this a uh, like and subscribe and so on if you haven't. All right, thanks everyone. I'll see you later. Take care.